This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. As we turn now to Philadelphia and a campaign to stop the displacement of people who live in affordable housing in a complex called University City Town Homes that's located in the now largely gentrified area of University City around the University of Pennsylvania and Drexel University. The neighborhood was once known as Black Bottom. The complex was built to provide affordable housing for the predominantly black and brown families and low-income seniors who lived there for years and were displaced um, by the university's buildings. For four decades, the property owner Ibid Associates contacted, uh, contracted with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to run University City Town Homes. It now plans to redevelop the property. The owner ordered all residents to leave by October 7th, but announced Monday that it reached an agreement with the company to extend with HUD to extend its contract through the end of the year. Residents want a commitment to keep the complex affordable instead of being displaced. They've held months of encampments and protests in Bishop Barber, president of Repairers of the Breach and co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, recently came to draw national attention to the crisis and may well go back. Many residents facing eviction from the university city town homes complex have lived there their whole lives. We're joined now by two residents, along with Bishop Barber, um, who says he may move in with them for a few days. In Philadelphia, Rashid Alexander, resident leader and organizer with the UC Town Homes, who's lived there for 14 years, and Sheldon Davids, resident leader and organizer with the UC Town Homes, who's been a member of UC Town Homes community for 13 years. His elderly mother-in-law has lived there for 40 years. Rashida Alexander, let's begin with you. Um, you have raised your children there. Talk about the neighborhood and what exactly has happened. You've also won a victory, a slight extension from eviction, though you're fighting to make that permanent. Yes. So, um, I came out of homelessness and became a resident at University City Tail Homes. Uh, I've raised my daughter, who's now 17. Um, in the University City Town Homes, the area, you know, is a really good area. Um, they have really good schools there. The amenities that are there um, are very accommodating. Uh, over the years, I've seen um, what was invested into our community, community slowly um, stripped away from us. Um, they took our children's institutions away, learning institutions, um, uh, elementary school, our early childhood center, and a high school. Um, and then years later, they, this, you know, are displacing the families here. But this community has been a close-knit community for over 40 years now. Um, so everybody in the community are pretty close. Uh, we're pretty much like family. And I wanted to ask Sheldon Davies, you've also you also have lived in the community for many years. You still have uh, relatives there and and friends. What about this whole issue of this uh, Altman Management Company wanting to to renovate these apartments from three or four bedrooms to studio and one bedroom apartments? Who are they uh, hoping to rent these to? Well, um, I don't want to speculate on who their target audience is, but what I am prepared to say with uh, some certainty and is that we need to preserve the living spaces, the kinds of living spaces for the persons who are there, because those spaces meet the needs of the persons that, whether because of multi-generational families or being elderly or being disabled. The space that they now occupy helps them to live their lives in as regular a way as possible, and it helps them to project, to realize their potential. And the idea of reducing the space that these folks occupy is anathema to the kind of development that folks claim that they want for the less enfranchised persons in our society. And I wanted to ask, uh, 
Reverend William Barber, uh, this, the national significance of what's going on here, uh, so many cities across the country, these giant uh, so-called liberal universities who, who always talk about racial justice and diversity, equity, and inclusion, whether it's the University of Chicago or Columbia University in New York, Temple University in North Philly, Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, uh, they are all gentrifying the neighborhoods around them uh, and pushing out more uh, uh, black and brown residents. And poor people, let's be real, this is poor black and brown, poor white, poor low income. These are not, and working poor. These are persons who get a subsidy for the rent. But remember, this same community was displaced 40 years ago. Now they're trying to displace them again. And universities, I'll say it, like UPenn and Drexel, any of those universities need to be shaming themselves. They should shut down the departments of sociology and, 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 and political science and law if they're not going to stand by communities just like this. This should be a model community. They should be talking about how to make sure all of the children in these communities can go free to these schools rather than how to displace them. We know that in, in Pennsylvania, for instance, working at a minimum wage, you have to work 103 hours a week just to afford a basic two-bedroom apartment. We know 2.5 million workers make under $15 an hour. What we know is that these, these tenants uh, have been fighting 11 months of tenant organizing. They had a 31-day protest encampment in July. Now 40-some faith leaders have signed on to a letter saying to the mayor, meet with them, because the mayor said, I'm not going to meet with you. They are calling on their state senator to pledge that state money towards saving townhomes and other Section 8, because see, the, you see townhome is the first. It'll be like a domino effect if, if we're not careful, and they'll be, be removing all of them. This is a place where poor and low-wealth folk have access to pre premier health care, premier jobs, premier education. It should be a model for the nation and not a model for destruction. Uh, the, the, the tenants have also figured out a way with other advocates to create uh, a way to save it, to create a special fund. Uh, that's what we should be talking about, how to preserve for families with disabilities, for parents, for residents, for people who've been there for the longest time. And it's happening around the country this kind of displacement and throwing people out on the street in a, in, a, in a situation where we already know that millions of people live on the brink of homelessness every night in America. We know that 40 percent of all Pennsylvanians are poor and low income. You know, this should be a political issue. The people running for candidate, running for the Senate in, in, in uh, Pennsylvania should be saying where they stand with these citizens. Uh, but what we know is the citizens are not going to give up. Those of us that are coming are just joining what they're doing. And I've had an invitation from uh, some of the residents to come and stay. And we're going to take them up on it. We had planned to go this weekend. Now we see a move, uh, maybe, but um, extending the the, um, the the deadline. But I really don't think they, they want to just throw the people out in the street. They want them to move. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make them move out. And the, the citizens are saying, no, like a tree step planted beside the water, we're not going anywhere. And so we're going to keep working with these tenants. America needs to hear from these folks. <laughs> this is us. This is who we are. They're black, they're white, they're Latino, they're young, they're old, they're, they're uh, people of different races, different sexualities, different disabilities. And what you have is a city and two universities and a greedy developer trying to throw them out when what they should be doing is lifting them up as a model community and what we should be building all around America. I mean, you talked about, Bishop Barber, um, how they were displaced 40 years ago and being displaced again. And this is an absolutely key point, that the whole area known as Black Bottom, between the 50s and 70s, the federal government initiating a period of urban redevelopment, often referred to as urban renewal, across American cities. The city cleared many local neighborhoods to create space for university-affiliated commercial and residential buildings. So the people already had to move. They were told, you have to move here. And now, once again, um, though many young people and the students in that area, of course, don't know this past history, uh, can you talk about the relationship between um, Altman Management Company, um, as they also co-own student housing? Yeah, well, you know, that, isn't that the irony? We, we, we have a company, on the one hand, is owning student housing, and on the other hand, is trying to put a community out that was displaced years ago 
because of racism. Now they want to displace them now because of greed and because they think that the residents are poor and black and brown and white and disabled, and they can just rough shot over them and push them out. But what they didn't expect was that these residents, these tenants would say, uh-uh, we're not moving. If you do this, you're going to have to do it in the broader daylight, and we're going to keep fighting. The reality is this, this, this um, group, this, they should, they could, should extend the HUD uh, contract for one to two years, and that could allow the people to stay in their homes, and then they could have time to plan and actually figure out a way to sell the um, uh, property in a way that would preserve the housing, preserve the housing. And the tenants want, they have a plan for that. They have people who are willing to do that. What they're trying to do is hurry up and rush. Amy, do you know they've even cut the lights off on the tenants now outside? They've refused to stop fixing the apartments up. Is they're trying to pressure them. They're trying to do everything they can to make them move on their own, because what they don't want to do is see them throw out, throw, be thrown out. And I want the students to hear what you just said. <laughs> students at Penn, students at Drexel, you all should be joining in massive action, nonviolently, with these tenants. Black Bottom, they were thrown there years ago to push them out of the way. Now people want to throw them out again to get them out of the way. It was always about greed and money and racism. It still is today. And there needs to be a major rising around this because this is wrong. And Drexel, I said to you on camera and Penn, the presidents, you ought to be standing right beside these residents and saying, take your hands off of them. You should be doing everything you can to invest in this community rather than divest this community and destroy them and push them out and gentrify this community. It's not right, and everybody knows it's not right that looks at it. Uh, Sheldon Davies, I wanted to ask you, the uh, the developer and, uh, uh, and, and HUD, of course, are talking about that the residents would be offered Section 8 certificates. You're familiar with uh, housing vouchers. You're familiar with Section 8 certificates. Why is that a terrible alternative? It's uh, certainly not a viable one. I don't know that I'd go as far as to say it's a terrible one, but it certainly isn't viable, primarily because increasingly we're finding that um, property owners are not uh, entertaining the idea um, of participating in the program. So when potential renters, when the displaced persons from our community and others venture out into the spaces um, to try to find other places to live, they are hamstrung from jump because when they present vouchers, that, that puts up a wall between themselves and potential renters because they're not particularly enamored with the program to begin with. And there's also, it also means that their options become narrowed in terms of the kinds of neighborhoods that they can um, explore living in and the kind of structures that um, are available to them in terms of the quality of the housing that they have access to. And Rashid Alexander, if you could talk about the student solidarity that has been shown by, for example, Penn students and the fact that they feel they're being retaliated against, as Altman also deals with student housing as well as your housing. Yes. So um, the students, um, they stand in solidarity with us, um, actually. Uh, asked for a meeting with Liz McGill, um, who's the new president of University of Penn. They continued and what well, they started and continued the encampment that originally started at the University City Townhomes, and now they're being harassed. Um, the administration is coming there harassing the students, um, asking them for their IDs. They also um, have board hearings um, for these students have. Um, for the for them to have disciplinary action um, because of them protesting and standing in solidarity with us and telling Penn to you know keep their promise because they have many broken promises um, to the neighborhood where University City resides.
I want to thank both of you for being with us, Rashida Alexander and Sheldon Davids, residents of UC Town Homes, part of the campaign to save thank affordable you. housing in Philadelphia. And we're going to continue to cover your story.